Hello, my name is Scott Davis. Welcome to New World Birth. This is the weekly neutrino forecast for August 14th to August 20th of 2016. And on August 14th, we have the sun. You can see it denoted here by this black circle with a dot in it. It's in Leo. It's also in the fourth hexagram. And on the outside of the wheel, we have the chop mark for the four. Numbered from bottom to top, the four goes yin, yang, yin, 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 yang. And then the fourth hexagram is mapped to an opening in an energy channel called a gate. Right here, we have the fourth gate of uh, formulization, youthful folly, the energy to beguile and succeed despite ignorance, freedom from retribution, located in the Asana Center in a collective logic uh, energy path in the understanding circuit called the channel of logic, the design of mental ease mixed with doubt that connects to its harmonic, the 63rd gate of doubt after completion in the spiral of life, all endings are beginnings. And I found human design to be amazingly accurate in describing the person that I use as my primary tool when I provide readings. And we have the following activated gates on August 14th. The sun is in the fourth gate with the earth in the 49th gate. The north node is in the 64th gate with the south node in the 63rd gate. Uh, Mercury is in the 47th gate. Venus is in the 40th gate. Mars is in the 34th gate. Jupiter is in the 6th gate. Um, Saturn is newly direct and turned direct on the 13th. And it is in the 9th gate. Uh, Uranus is retrograde in the 42nd gate. Neptune is retrograde in the 37th gate and Pluto is retrograde in the 54th gate. So obviously not every gate activation forms a channel, but this information can be very helpful if you know your own human design chart because some of these transits will form channels with potentials in your personal body graph. And we begin the week with three channel definitions due to the transit field. With Neptune in the 37 and Venus in the 40, we've got the channel of community until the 14th. This definition brings the energy where people will wonder where they belong in the scheme of things and try to live that out. This is a time of thinking about marriage and family as the foundation of community. Fairness becomes more important under the influence of the channel community, balance becomes important in all aspects of life. People will explore how they fit into their communities on a mystical level, uh, where they fit into the universe and what their true purpose is. This impacts people to think uh, uh, they need to be supportive of those beings around them and get pulled into things related to community. With the defined ego center, uh, people without uh, uh, a defined heart center might feel as if they have something to prove or want to make it improvements or make promises or commitments that aren't correct for them. The defined solar plexus can influence those without to feel that uh, unfamiliar emotional wave of a, uh, which can uh, perhaps even lead to acting confrontational. And then with the sun in the four connected to the south node in the 63, we have the channel of logic. Uh, until August 16th, which is about mental ease mixed with doubt. None of us are really designed to make decisions based on our minds. And this channel brings mental gifts that should be used in service of others rather than trying to understand our own lives. Uh, when your strategy and authority presents you with someone who needs your clarity and inspiration, this transit can support the process. This is scientific thinking through being skeptical and questioning whether the logic or patterns are valid. Uh, this brings mental pressure to people without a defined head center, which in turn can bring doubt when they uh, when trying to analyze their own lives. Uh, this definition is future oriented uh, through looking at uh, mental patterns and projecting them into what lies ahead. This can bring war worry as any answers revealed by this process will need to be tested uh, to pr and prove to determine if they have practical applications. The best use of this definition is for research purposes and testing of a hypothesis, but then recognizing that the results uh, need to be invited before they're shared. <clears throat> and then with the North Node in the 64 and Mercury in the 47, uh, we have the channel of abstraction and design of mental activity mixed with clarity. 
uh, on, and that will be with us until August 17th. Uh, the energy of this channel is about creating something new out of something old. Uh, this is about abstract thought being brought into the collective consciousness through arts, philosophy, history, and culture. It's really wonderful energy for telling stories about our experiences that inspire others, but brings confusion when used to try to resolve our own issues. And both the uh, channel of abstraction and the channel of logic uh, define the, the head and Ajna centers. Um, the defined Ajna center can influence people to believe that they're mentally certain even when they're not. The defined head center can bring pressure to think about things that don't matter. August 14th begins with the sun in the fourth line of the fourth hexagram. Uh, the sun is exalted in the four four and is described as the liar, role playing as an art form, the actor. Uh, exalted fantasy uh, uh, protects and nurtures a sense of purpose and reason, and no matter how misguided, the potential to find or illustrate the formulas through fantasy. But then later on the 14th, the sun then moves into the fifth line of the fourth hexagram. Uh, and uh, this shift happens at, um, at uh, 8.37 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is uh, 037 UT on the 15th. Uh, the sun in the uh, four five is seduction, allowing others to assume responsibility as a shield against potential punishment, exalted uh, unearned reward and recognition, uh, the potential for, to succeed through uh, the understanding of others, detrimented <clears throat> uh, a life of, of lip service to antiquated and unsatisfactory values. Cynicism, the potential of cynicism that comes uh, when uh, uh, with always having to acknowledge and understand others. And then also on the 14th, uh, Venus moves uh, uh, from the 60, from the 40, uh, and into uh, the 64th hexagram. So moving from the 40 to the 64, where it's uh, joining the North Node. In human design, Venus is about values, morality, natural law, in which we deal with the other and the consequences of the world around us, according to Ra. Uh, Venus is in the 64th gate of confusion before completion. Transition like birth requires uh, a determined strength uh, for the passage through. And Venus is exalted in the first line of the 64, uh, which is the line of conditions, exalted in penetrating to the center of the understanding that instills the necessary harmony to survive disorder amongst the confusion, uh, the difficulty to fi in finding the point. Uh, in the program, Venus is about control through maintaining the status quo in the way, in the way in which we operate with each other. Um, and we're all here to experience uh, the transiting planets through the Maya. And we're not here to avoid the Maya, but to embrace it, but as yourself through following your strategy and authority. On the 15th, the sun then moves into the sixth line of the fourth hexagram uh, at 8.02 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 02 UT on the 16th. Uh, the sun in the 4.6 uh, is in the line of excess. Repeated and conscious abuse of norms will not escape discipline. Exalted the development through uh, experience of the techniques of applying self-restraint. The potential in, log in a logical process to recognize when the understanding is not complete and having the patience to wait out, out the process. Detriment of the gall to accept punishment as a price of excess. Uh, despite recognizing the incompleteness, a lack of patience with the process. And then on the 16th, uh, we have the sun moving out of the four. Self node back up there. And it moves into the 29. And with that, the Earth moves from the 49 to the 30. 
All right. So um, we have the Earth. It's in the 30th hexagram. And this is the gate of recognition of feelings, the clinging fire. Freedom recognized as an illusion and limitation accepted as fate. And this shift happens at 7.27 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 23.27 UT. Uh, and we've got the sun in the 29th gate of saying yes, the abysmal, the deep within the deep. Persistence despite difficulties has inevitable rewards. And the sun in the first line of the 29 is the line of the draftee. Uh, the ability to adapt to struggle when necessary, but not as a permanent state. Exalted, the innate nature to apply energy in times of war and peace. The power to persevere when necessary, but not generally. Detriment, the deep impression ability whose mark uh, from times of struggle uh, may make it uh, a may make a return to normal conditions extremely difficult. Uh, hesitation making commitments based on past experiences and as we move from the 4 to the 29 we enter a gate of commitment to sharing experience the 29 is a collective abstract sacral gate of having uh, the perseverance having perseverance and bonding uh, but the not self takes this as a gate of saying yes to others when it's really about saying yes to having an experience bonding with the, the experience uh, when people with this gate do not follow their strategy and authority they inevitably say yes to things that they will eventually regret uh, making commitments uh, to others uh, that uh, that they wish they hadn't uh, connected to the g-center gate 46 um, uh, and its determination and synchronicity the 46 is about the love of the body and so the 29 uh, feeds uh, the love of the body it's tantric uh, discovery that comes from committing to experience succeeding where others fail failing where others succeed uh, not a commitment to another but to experience going deep into this experience and its polarity is the 30th gate uh, uh, and and the recognition of feelings and the desire of recognition of feelings of desire in the solar plexus uh, this is the gate of the fates and sometimes I think of 30 as the gate of saying no although it's more of saying yes but not in the way you expect uh, this brings the, us to the third variation of the cross of contagion uh, in the quarter of bonding and both the 29 and the 30 are, uh, are uh, about the abstract process so watch out for getting overloaded uh, when uh, the sun is in the 29th gate and saying yes. And then also on the 16th, uh, Mars moves from the 34th gate and it joins Saturn in the 9th gate. Um, and uh, Mars is in the gate of focus, the taming power of the small. The potential uh, can be fulfilled uh, through a detailed attention to all pertinent aspects. And Mars is detrimented in the first and the fourth lines of the uh, ninth hexagram. In the first line, it's in the line of sensibility, a balanced and responsible approach to problem solving. Detrimented after a hasty and frustrating search, the urge to kick the door in when the key is in your pocket, uh, the power to generate uh, that which will lose focus. And uh, Mars in the program is about ex uh, expression th through uh, mutation. This plays out in the mundane world as change. These changes uh, take hold in the homogenized world as fads or trends. This is an illusion because uh, the, the population is ready for the same changes at the same time because of transiting Mars. On the 17th, the sun then moves into the second line of the 29th hexagram at 6.51 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 22.51 UT. Uh, the sun is exalted in the 29.2 and is described as assessment. Persistence tempered by caution. Exalted the power of sustainment as a guiding light, saying yes to the power to persevere. And then also on the 17th, Mercury moves from the 47 
uh, and it moves, it joins Jupiter in the 6. So moving from the 47 down to, to join Jupiter in the 6. Uh, and uh, um, Mercury in mythology was the messenger of the gods. <coughs> so, excuse me, this is about communication. Or as Rob put it, the expansion of human consciousness through communication, not just as words, but also as music. And Mercury is in the gate of friction, conflict, the fundamental design component of progress, the law that growth cannot exist without friction. And Mercury is detrimented in the first line of the six uh, as retreat, uh, the, the realization that wasting one's resources against overwhelming odds is not courage but folly a uh, detriment the inferiority complex where retreat is experienced as personal weakness emotional instability in times of conflict and in the program mercury is about expression through communication it influences the homogenized population to communicate about the themes of the gate and line that transiting mercury inhabits its primary impact is psychological uh, it impacts the not-self mind, and it distorts the way in which we look at things which can lead to action. This conditions people to think and communicate about the same things. And in the sixth gate, I'd expect to hear people uh, talking about whether they're open or closed to intimacy. And then on the 8th, uh, uh, sorry, the 18th, <clears throat> the sun then moves into the third line of the 29th hexagram, uh, at 6.15 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 22.15 UT, uh, the sun in the 29.3 is evaluation. In this context, properly assessed in action, exalted despite the urge and the cost of inaction, the knowledge that it is uh, sometimes better to fight another day, the power to wait. Uh, a detriment, a, a pr preference uh, for withdrawal uh, in the principle, uh, if to withdraw in the principle, but with little regard for the effect, the inability to make commitments, the power of caution. And then on the 19th, the sun then moves into the fourth line of the 29th hexagram. Uh, at 5.38 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, that's 21.38 UT, the sun in the 29.4 is described as directness. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Exalted, the wisdom to use the simplest, most uh, direct approach uh, to solve difficulties. Uh, um, uh, the power to commit oneself to the simplest and most direct action. Detriment, simplicity and directness is all too often seen as inharmonic and aesthetically crude. Uh, the power of directness that often offends others. Also on the 19th, Venus moves out of the 64, leaving behind uh, the north node, and it moves into the 47. Uh, bring this back. This definition of these two centers, the head center and the Ajna center. And uh, so um, <clears throat> so we have uh, Venus. Again, we talked about Venus being about uh, values, morality, things like that. Um, and Venus is in the 47th gate of, of, uh, of realizing oppression, a restrictive state, a, a restrictive and adverse state as a result of internal weakness or external strength or both. And Venus is in the first line of the 47. Uh, this is the line of taking stock, the ability in times of hardship to concentrating on eradicating the negative factors that lead to self, lead to oppression, uh, realizing that negative thoughts have to be eradicated, detrimented the delusion of seeing uh, oppression as exclusively a, a external phenomena with disastrous results, the sense that the world is against us, against you. Um, and then with the North Node in the 64 and Venus in the 47, uh, again, we have the channel of abstraction, design, and mental activity mixed with clarity until August 23rd. <clears throat> again, the energy of this is really about taking something old, making it into something new, or what's perceived as being new, 
uh, and we see this in the collective consciousness in arts, philosophy, history, and culture. Uh, and again, uh, whenever we have a defined head center, uh, folks are going to feel a pressure to think about things that don't matter. The defined eyes in the center uh, may influence people to feel like they're certain of something even when they're not. Uh, and then on the 20th, the sun then moves into the fifth line of the 29th hexagram at 5.01 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 21.01 UT. Uh, the sun's exalted in the 29.5 and is described as overreach, the tendency to bite off more than one can chew, exalted where the drive is in the design, not ambition driven, uh, the control, uh, the uncontrollable drive to say yes. <clears throat> so anyway, excuse me, I, I thank you for checking out uh, New World Birth. The next segment of the weekly neutrino forecast will be on August 21st, uh, 2016, should be available on the 20th when we'll continue to look at the influence of the heavenly bodies as they transit the sky in the hexagrams of the I Ching. You can check us out on Facebook, Blogger, or YouTube as this New World Birth Presence is in all those places. And I invite you to share this information as videos or as text as widely as you choose. And, and invite you to contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com if you've got any questions or you wish to schedule a reading. And if you've been thinking about getting a reading, please contact me. I would love to provide you a reading <clears throat> during these uncertain times. You'll need to be able to either call me in Maine in the USA or we can connect with Skype to receive your reading. Uh, we're also accepting donations to keep these reports freely available. Uh, and the, if you want to make a donation, contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com or get a reading. Uh, basically, uh, that's two different ways that you can keep us uh, doing what we're doing. Um, and I do appreciate all you folks that are, have, uh, have been contacting me uh, regarding getting readings and, and uh, making donations. Uh, great, great gratitude there. Uh, but we are still... Um, still behind the eight ball here. So if you can help out, uh, much would be appreciated. Um, anyway, uh, as always, I am blessed that you've taken the time to connect with my passion for these ancient mysteries, their synthesis and application to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste in Lakesh. As Ra would say, love yourself. All my best and look forward to connecting with you in the future.